Palim Palim and welcome back to This Ain't a Dating Show XXX. This is our second edition and again we have a really incredible guest, the best dressed man or the most interesting dressed man in the industry since Brad Mitchell and Bruce Friedman. <laughs> it's, our, it's our good homie William Suarez Pinto, the polyglot man. That is really Hello, an guys. expert into dating and I'm really happy that he's here today with us. This show is presented like always from the affiliate dating program Masters in Cash and we will directly start with the chat today. So William, thanks for being here on the show. Greetings to yeah. Portugal and um, a lot of people here know you, but for the people that don't know you or don't know you too well, um, introduce yourself. Okay, thanks Stefan for having me first of all. So I'm I'm sorry you introduced me like that. I would have known I would have wear my, my best outfit. I am just like out of bed in Portugal, it's two hours less. And uh, I am on my let's say like relaxing time. So um, I didn't like expect to have such a great introduction. So I will I will get myself introduced. Um so aside of wearing some colorful stuff, um I also do a lot of dating, like Stefan say. Um, I met Stefan a bit like of an anecdote. I met Stefan, he was one of the first person I met probably like seven or eight years ago when I started in, in the industry uh, in a boat in um, Euro web payment. And since there we've been, let's say, like uh, uh, co colleagues, uh, first like, let's say, buddy, colleague and now friends. So thank you for having me, my friend here. Um, it's a great pleasure. So I do uh, dating for a while. I started in the industry in dating and continue uh, up until let's say today. I uh, started uh, at Hub People about seven or eight years ago, I believe seven years ago now, um, and um, was doing like was running the affiliate program uh, for a while and learned a lot of my let's say like first knowledge in this company. Um, and then I move on to Xcash where I become let's say uh, Stefan uh, colleague for a while or like um, a brother for a while and we were running like um, a very strong affiliate program uh, in the dating in Europe and now the last uh, few months I decided to um, uh, stop um, my cooperation with Xcash and I'm now let's say taking some good times and relaxing a bit and thinking of my of my next move let's say. Uh, so my expertise are really into dating affiliates. I know um, quite a few of them, but also dating product. I did quite a lot of product and mailing and, and bidding. So the, the whole, let's say, like overview of this dating area. I mean, I, uh, I followed your career practically from, yeah, maybe not day one, but from uh, month one or something like this. I think you were <laughs> like two, three months in uh, Hub People when we, uh, when we met there and uh, you were already like super, super energized to push this forward. Um, I mean, you started with uh, RefShare and white labels, then in Xcash you had CPL, you had uh, CPA, and you worked also um, a lot with API stuff, a topic that will be like um, the, the, yeah, the line that we will speak about today. So you, re you are really a true expert in the dating industry. Uh, that the people know you a little bit more about your character, not only about your professions and your outfit. I uh, prepared um, six points. Um, it's a new category, a new category on the second show that we will start. It's called Tell Me. And it's Tell Me, do you prefer? And I give you two options. There is no uh, no, or you, you start and you hold a monologue uh, for five minutes about one of this. You can do it after this uh, seven questions if you really <laughs> feel it. And uh, yeah, we have unlimited time. The camera has battery for one and a half hours. So you can speak about all the points if you want. So I give you now seven points and you simply say like, yes, this or this. So the first one is shitty wine or great beer. Great beer. Okay. Uh, live trade shows or virtual ones? Life for sure, hundred uh, percent. About this, we can speak out <laughs> later on as well. <laughs> um, generic dating offers or niche offers? Uh, niche offers. My man, Netflix or video games? Video game. I finally acquired my PS Five, so video game. 
You can send me that it. back my PS4 because yeah, exactly. you have it since one and a half years. Um, iPhone or Android? iPhone, all iPhone. the way. All the way, all the way up. And the last one, my favorite one, only a few people here. Actually, not only a few people, a lot of people understand why. Barbie girl or don't you know, pump it up? <laughs> this one is a hard one, but I would say... <laughs> Because I'm on your show, I'm going to say, don't you know, pump it up, but it's about 50-50, to be honest. <laughs> it's about 50-50. Okay, if, um, if somebody else would make the show, you would most probably uh, say Barbie Choose Girl. Barbie Girl, exactly. Actually, I also sung for, sung for you a, um, a birthday song with Don't You Know, Pump It Up. I never sung your one for Barbie Girl. Yeah, you need to make that for my next birthday. It's coming up. And uh, what, was the, what was the first song I, um, I, I sang for you? Ah, the Backstreet Boys. The Backstreet Boys, of course. Yeah, the Backstreet Boys. Ah, oh, fuck, I should have put the Backstreet Boys. So anyway, um, let's speak quickly also about this live show and this uh, virtual ones. Of course, the live show are um, are more interesting when it comes, let's say, also to the fun factor and to the networking factor. But when you really uh, consider maybe even completely new business, uh, would you still say this or would you say because of the really gigantic amount of people that you can reach online on the virtual shows, the virtual shows are maybe better than uh, people think? Okay, so um, I have, um, for me, live will always be best. I totally agree that it's much harder to, to let's say, reach everyone on a, on a live show because you only have people which are there, obviously, and, and the current situation made it quite hard to, to travel. Uh, but one thing I found during during COVID for, for us, and we are lucky to live and to work in the industry, uh, we are because we were affected, but not as much as many other industry. But one thing I really found is like, it's much, uh, it got much harder with the time of not seeing people to do like some strong deals. So the connection are there and you don't like lose the, the let's say the connection with the people, but um, making business happen is always there. But if it's something a bit specific or something a bit different, something which require a little bit more, let's say like in depth thought or some, let's say thing which are not conventional, uh, it got much harder to actually hit up someone if you don't see it for a year and a half or two years and say something unconventional or some different way of doing business. Uh, so I really found that uh, right now, the connection are not lost, but you cannot use them to the fullest that you are able to use them when you see the people like we always do every two, three months. That was so, my biggest down point. So uh, we at Masters in Cash, we started around uh, one year ago to really work very strong with the API. And uh, we are very happy with the outcomes, our partners as well. But this is already like a topic that you describe now that it's not something that you quickly discuss, uh, discuss online. Um, if I think to the partnerships that are running there now, um, at least from the ones that I do, everybody there I know in person and everybody I met on the shows and um, are like longtime friends. And a lot of them were now met again in Mabea, for example. So let's speak a little bit about more API. You were working mm -hmm. a lot in this and you have there a really deep knowledge. There was also a lot of things that I uh, learned from you when it comes to this. So there is nobody that I can imagine at the moment that uh, is more knowledge able to speak about this. Um, it's not something that um, especially media buyers are using day to day. So can you please summarize a little bit what the API is, especially when we speak about dating? Well, um. API is really like, a, it's a, a complicated thing to say Like instead of sending a, a conventionally and for a while, uh, media buyers, affiliate, webmasters, whichever like category uh, people falls in, um, were using, they were using direct link, sending a click to like a, an offer URL. And then from this moment forward, when the click is generated and sent to the advertiser, the affiliate job is over and it now relies on the advertiser or on the network to monetize his, his click. Um, the API goes like, let's say one step further, and instead of sending a click to an offer URL, you actually post to the advertiser uh, server a bunch of information. So in, the, in, the, in dating, I'm gonna say really the most important are like the IPs, the email address, some username, some other field if it's needed or required or not, depending on, on who you're working with. And then the advertiser is able to accept or refuse this post, which is not a click anymore. It's already like a user or at least a bunch of information which you can read 
this um, analyze and understand if you want to accept or not or not this leak or this post like we call it uh, so it's a very different way of of working with traffic um, for the advertiser and for the affiliate so um, it's a little bit more complicated so if somebody wants to start with uh, with an api uh, what setup this person needs well, um, it's a bit more complicated. Yeah, when you are like, let's say, um, I don't want to use the word traditional because like uh, some traditional affiliate are using API, but let's say some uh, people sending traffic to an offer URL, um, you can be just a, a good analyst, a good media buyer, a good statistician, or like a good marketer. You take a link and you just like push, set up your campaign, push your campaign and you're on. With API, you need a bit of technical knowledge. You need to understand a bit more and you need to be able to set up this server to server call. So there is a little bit more work behind it. On top of that, you also need, uh, because one of the value of API is to be able to own your own funnel. So you don't use the pre-landers or the landing page of the network or of the advertiser. You set up your own and you can really like funnel all your traffic from your creative all the way down to the registration form, which you, you own. Let's say it's your own registration form all the way through to have a, let's say a thorough and very well sought a funnel. You need to be able to also create your pre-landers and your landing page. So it takes a little bit more time and a little bit more uh, technical effort and resources. And besides the effort and the knowledge and maybe some money that needs to be invested if you cannot do it yourself and you have to outsource it, is there any risk for the affiliate if they are using that? Um, yeah, again, yes, of course there is risk like, like in, in every single model. So for me, the, the affiliate risk, I would say, it's really the fact that um, often when you start on, on API, uh, because of the, uh, let's say like the aura of the API um, still around, the payout are often lower. And when I say lower, sometimes it's significantly lower than normal, normal payout. And I think Stefan, you can agree on that. Yeah, I believe we, we also have cash. it lower. Exactly. So that's, that's a, let's say an industry standard. Uh, so lower payout, um, they often, if you if you arrive and you don't know the people, and as you say, Stefan, you only set it up with friends or people you know for a long time. But when you have someone which you don't know and just like hit up your program and say, hey, I have API traffic and I send it to you, it's often less trust than uh, like sending to direct uh, link because like the advertiser don't want his own funnel and affiliate can do, let's say, whatever he wants behind the scene. And then there is also like something which is um, not often so, but as of today, and I believe it will change, and I hope it will change, but often um, the budget for from advertiser company are still much higher on direct linking than on API. It, it's, so, it's not so that the whole process, it's so that two different entities often, and we have a budget for buying normal direct link traffic and traffic and budget to buy API. And as of today, the, we're still much more conservative, people are still much more conservative with buying this like API traffic. Um, do you think this is maybe also because a lot of dating advertisers never really used the API, especially when we speak about API on CPL to their fullest and they don't even have data to rely on? I, I, like the problems like here, we, we, we're taking like a lot of people talk about API in a very different way and say like, yeah, but it's very dangerous. At the end of the day, it really depends, like you can have direct traffic and even if it gets harder and harder to fraud, I'm sure Stefan on direct traffic, you're still seeing a lot of fraud, uh, mm -hmm. which comes along. So it's also really about working with the right person. Like if you're, if a good affiliate needs API, is not to be able to increase his ROI. Also, the bottom line is definitely for him to make more money, but it's not just to be able to just send you a bunch of shit leads so he can like bank some more money. It's because he's got a real strategy behind it to remarket, to remonetize the data, and to be able to acquire much more aggressively and cascade the, the traffic. I will talk about that a bit later. But for me, it's not like the company might still be a bit worried, also more and more company by API on CPL. But um, I believe that it will really get uh, bigger and bigger and people get needs to actually get through it. Mm -hmm. And do you see a trend of uh, companies that are jumping more and more on the API bandwagon? Because even with these risks, in the end, the ROI they are making with an affiliate counts, and they want to have as much affiliates and traffic as possible. So they are more opening it, or you say more they, there were some guys that run API since ages, and these are the, the guys that keep it, and the rest is very careful in trying it. Yeah, so... Um... I don't know for most of the people, when do people think API started? Because 
for a lot of people, API has only been around. Like they hear this word API for a couple of years, two, three, four years. But I remember when I started, we were already talking about API. So it's really not a new topic. Um, mm -hmm. Now, I, I believe some company are opening it more and more. Some company might be closing it because of some, um, like, let's say, company reason, like company policy. Um, but I really think that it's something which should be open more and more because it's going to help everybody to be able to like monetize better the traffic. Mm -hmm. And um, when you look at the different API um, yeah, types, I know there are different ways to use it. You can upload lists and you can um, use, for example, like you said, build your own sign up forms if you are a media buyer. What are the most common uh, common ways to use an API? Well, um, you really have two different. Uh, uh, we're talking really about dating here. We use the word API. Yes, yes, yeah. Like this ain't a dating show. XXX. No, yeah, this yeah. is onlinemarketing.com. Exactly. Exactly. So uh, regarding dating, it's really like two way of of posting API. You first have what we call live API. So it's really like a user arriving into a reg form. A user is live. He fills the reg form, and then at the moment of the user submitting is uh, like it's sign up, it's free sign up, um, the affiliate post live the user. That's the first, let's say, API way. And it can be done in many different ways. It can be done via a reg form, which the media buyer is building. It can also be done by buying email traffic with uh, email passing. And here you can uh, get like get the click from the, from the email and already post API uh, the user. Uh, you can also do what we call code API or coreg, depending on it's a different way of calling it, but it's like um, a user um, um, sign up to product A um, in your in your sign up form. You send it live to product A, and then you also correct it. So the user is live at the moment he clicked the button, but you don't open the redirection URL and you don't open a live window to advertiser B. You just send post the data. That's like a second way to do it. And then you have what is called data API which is just a bunch of leads, which is there. And you just like start to post them to someone and the company needs to email them to be able to re-engage these users. So I will say it's two, the, the number two and the number three are very similar. Some people consider them the same. Some people say they're different, uh, but it's really two ways, let's say, of doing API live or not live. Uh, one buzzword that you were uh, saying already before and that you also wanted to circle back is the cascade. Uh, what is the API cascade? Um, it's, um, right. When you, when you push traffic on a, um, on a, um, direct link, when the click arrive on the, on the offer URL, that's it. Um, imagine like, uh, Stefan Mulbara, I'm sure went to a lot of dating sites, uh, before, uh, because he likes it. And I'm sure like you end Still up. Still not successful. Off. Yeah, Still but that's successful. a different, I'm not talking about the success rate of the user. I'm talking the, how many times you went to a dating site. Um, and so you already put your email address on this site and then 10 days later, another affiliate push you back to the same dating site and you sign up with the same email address. Often the advertiser will not pay you or will pay you a lower rate because it's duplicate email. That's just a normal practice. Uh, so for the, for the advertiser, it's actually harder to monetize over and over the same leads, obviously. And for the affiliate, he's paying, he's like losing some payouts sometimes full, sometimes like partially, depending on the rules of the advertiser. With API, if you post a user and the advertiser actually say, okay, this, um, this email address, I already have it. I don't want your lead, um, Mr. Affiliate. The, the um, uh, lead comes back to the publisher and the publisher can send it to another, a second advertiser and a third advertiser. And of course, and that, that's what we call the cascade, being able to just post the lead somewhere. And if the advertiser don't want it, you just keep posting it up until someone um, accepts it. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you have a logic behind your cascade. You always put the top offers on top. It's, it's very similar to the concept of smart linking on the click, but it's through a server post and accept refusal dependent on accept refusal of the advertiser, then just on redirection from demographic of, um, of a smart link click. I think the example that you gave with the smart link is really uh, a very good explanation, especially for the people that have not worked with this or the people that are not into uh, dating too much and they come, for example, from mobile or so. Um, okay, I mean, I know it that my lead is sold so often because I always get this advertising from the horny milfs in my neighborhood. 
So <laughs> if I would click have you, on have the you horn, found one yet? Um, they are not so horny here. <laughs> they all, they all, they only write and they stop after I put my credit card. Yeah, <laughs> de depending what model the advertiser has. So if somebody is watching now this uh, this video and is uh, convinced to start um, to work on API, most probably it will be a, a person that is already a little bit more experienced. Um, of course, he needs the advertiser that accepts the API. Just as one example, but there are a lot of others out there as well that are good in this field. Uh, what else he needs beside an advertiser that gives him this possibility? It doesn't matter now if they uh, give him the API on RefShare or CPI or CPA. What else the affiliate needs? Uh, well, he needs to be able, as you said, like to have uh, or a bit of technical skill or have a developer which can uh, like connect the API because the way it works is the advertiser give you is API documentation and you have to just plug it. Um, that's one of the, let's say the downside of API is not like a, a one fits all. Every time you want to integrate a new advertiser, you need to set up their own like um, API and, and plug to their own API. That's the first thing. The second thing is really like being able to uh, build your own funnel, as we said, build your own landing page and understand like what you are actually gonna do with it. And the third one is to um, try to explain your strategy um, with your advertiser because now when you send traffic to a direct link of course everybody every single affiliate manager asks okay where your traffic come from uh, what you do with it how do you advertise it like it's the, the normal process but on api the the screening as we call it is much more like push because we really want to understand what's going on with the lead we just get out of nowhere because for the advertiser it's really a lead out of nowhere mm. And uh, what about uh, the software? The affiliate needs some special software, most probably not when he wants to run it uh, as normal. But let's say the guy already wants to run the cascade. He needs like a special software. This is a software you buy as a SAAS or you um, you have to program it yourself or how is it usually? Um, well, most of the people I know have got their own um, cascade, like their own. It's not really a software, it's not I'm not aware of something like widely available with, I say, like a, as a SaaS. Uh, however, around, I'm sure, oh, I know there is some people which can provide this service uh, and that um, it's always like helpful. But most of the people are, when they're getting into the API game, they understand that they need to put a bit of effort and they build what is needed. The flow is really depending on some API people are really banking onto the posting the user uh, and posting some call rates. Some other API just like want to buy the lead and remarket it on email. So it really also depends what you're doing with lead. An API, uh, like a, a media buyer is a media buyer uh, on direct. He send a direct click and then that's it. Media buyers on API really have very different strategies depending on how they do it. Okay, I mean, um, it was for me before this call already clear that API is really uh, an amazing solution. And I hope the people that are watching the show are uh, now more and more also interested in trying that. Um, how you see the future of API? What will, will there be some new developments or will it simply grow because um, the affiliate marketing gets more and more professional and you have to milk the last dime out of the guy, especially users are signed up very often in all kinds of programs already. Where you see the future of the API? Well, if I would give you like the million dollar answer, I might come back next year on this show and be a millionaire. That's the truth. So let's say let's say I don't have the million dollar answer. Um, the fact that um, oh I don't have it yet at least. Um, the fact that I believe API gonna grow. Uh, yes. Um, the fact that I I really have some let's say issue about um, a lot of people set in stone and I'm gonna explain it why. So some a lot of people are still not happy with. API, I'm talking media buyers, because they, like we said before, they feel that they get lower rate, they feel that the ROI is not good enough, they feel that like it gets harder for, for them, and they try a bit, and they just stopped. And for mm -hmm. me, the true value of like, these people are very clever people, which spend sometimes months, sometimes even years to build a successful media buying business on direct clicks. And then they just take API as like it's a new traffic source. Oh, we're going to try that quickly. We're going to do a test. And they try it for a couple of weeks and so. 
and for me it's quite um a shame because like they spend a lot of time effort and money to build a successful business on one side and then this new thing which is kind of very different business unit at at, at least or different business overall to do like api traffic they just spend like a, i know some people will spend a couple of months oh it doesn't work and stop and it's like the same that when you build your first business on normal like media buying you really need to put time and effort and don't seek it the same way as your current business because it's a different business altogether but keep trying on api i believe it's the future for sure and the people which we really keep trying uh will really bank on it there is two reasons why they will bank on it first is like you can really like not lose anything so as i said the example of the click which is like already like a lead which the advertiser has this one you will still like cascade it and get it but there is also the fact that you get the data and you can do yourself or you can ask a third party to monetize your email data the third thing which people don't think and it's something which i believe it's one of the most important in our industry if stefan tomorrow you become a media buyer and you spend 100k a month a million a month whatever it is and you run campaign on its own cpl um when you stop spending money you stop getting money so the business concept and if you want to sell your business as much as it's very profitable and the net result is great when you want to sell your business you are the asset so you know how to run your campaign so what is it to buy apart from business concept which if you leave you don't have anything left for the buyer of your business with api you still are building a database so on top of all these great results and the net result being looking good the guy also buys something which is very tangible he buy a database of user which is very different to just like selling clicks or getting paid for like cpl on clicks where you only buy a net result which is like a combination of media buying and strategy because the um, affiliate can take out every time he is posting this link the same information, store it for himself and use it later on for marketing. And before was maybe the only option to, um, I don't know, put a push script or something like this there. Yeah. Well, if you do API and you don't collect, you just pass the lead, you don't collect it, don't do API. That's just mm. my, that's my first main uh, like answer on this. So actually there would be um, a new category, the second new category for this uh, second episode of the Saint the Dating Show XXX. Uh, I call the category the golden nugget and uh, the golden nugget is the best advice you can give to somebody um, that we didn't hear about online marketing, about uh, online dating marketing that we haven't heard 1000 times. 1000 times is stuff like um, you don't lose money, you buy data or uh, go to the shows and network. Uh, we heard this shit every time. I, I, I told this shit uh, 100 times. Actually, I wanted to ask you for your golden nugget, but uh, actually this was maybe even the golden nugget. Well, actually, yes, it was kind of the golden nugget. Um, uh, I know you hear it hundreds and hundreds of times, but uh, uh, going to the show and having a strong relationship with your advertiser, it's really a golden nugget, even if it's that obvious. Now, the next one, this, what I said, is really like um, people which tried before. And it happens a lot, for example, for people running very success successfully, um, uh, media buying through comparison site. A lot of them do that and a lot of them are very successful with that. And I know quite a few which tried API and really were unhappy. It's like, no, because they, those people tend to have, those ideas tend to have rate, as you know, Stefan, much higher than the average. And yeah, then yeah, when, yeah. They <laughs> when they want to switch from that to API on, and people start to trash their rate and it's like, it's not working. For me, I really want to ask those guys and all the others to keep trying because if they put as much effort like they did at the beginning to build their first business, it will work and bring great results. Um, data, like um, you are in mobile and you know exactly uh, how important is data. Data as not the data you collect. I'm talking about the data. Is this user uh, on Vodafone or on T-Mobile? The this big was data. Your, exactly. This was your important information to be able to monitor it perfectly back in the days, in your mobile days. But for, for data, when you collect data, you hold a power. If you know how to use it, you will really do great about it. Um, for me, there is also like another thing. When you have your own, um, let's say, uh, cascade, it becomes much easier to actually try things. Because like you really have a flow of your own, um, not just your own 
um, creative, but you have a flow of your own free lender and lender, and you don't have to always go to your advertiser. Can I have a new lender? Can you build me this? Can you build me that? You do everything yourself. The last thing I want to say about golden nuggets on API, and this is something needs to be discussed via with your advertiser, and it's something which not everybody do, and something that you might need to start to have some nice, uh, let's say, revenue and payout to be able to ask it. But API means that you post the user, li live API, sorry, means you're going to post the user in the members area of the advertiser. Make sure you ask your advertiser to give you all the redirection URL which are allowed, because maybe you want to try to send the user into the messaging section. Maybe you want to send him directly to a profile page. Maybe you want to send him directly to the payment page. Do not just take whatever, like the first res URL response that the advertiser give you, because they often give you only one. Ask the advertiser, where can I send my user? Can I send him directly to a profile? Yes, then you take a profile of this girl, you put the landing page with that, and you arrive directly to this profile on the members area. Can I send it directly to the credit card? And you do your own testing, because here you're a step further than the advertiser. Advertiser is supposed to do that for you, and he's doing that for you when you send on clicks. But when you send on API, you are the one supposed to be able to do this testing and should be doing this testing. And um, do you have maybe even, don't have to be exact, but something like an estimation how this is even improving your results if you are um, yeah, um, changing the redirect URL and not simply take what the advertiser is giving you? It, it really depends on your way of, of promoting. I will not say I give a number because it will be like, like um, like uh, we say, pull out my ass. So no, I cannot give you. But I have some, a couple of examples which were um, two like two digit like uh, variation variance, sorry, uh, of uh, conversion ratio. So uh, improvement can be huge. Um, but this is something which I, I feel you need to understand. The the advertiser cannot do anything anymore. But this testing, it's really the affiliate job now to send the user wherever they want or whatever the advertiser at least allows it. And if the advertiser say we can only send it there, you need to un make him understand. Again, if you are a serious affiliate and you have enough spend and enough revenue, okay, but I want to do my own testing. I need to have more than one redirection URL for like to send my user m in more than one place. So um, we can say that it adds for the affiliate another um, another variable for A, B testing or A, B, C, D testing. Uh, like everything yep. else, like he has to test usually other landing pages or other banners. Uh, this is now coming on top. Actually, this was not now not one golden nugget. It was like three or four golden nuggets, but they are all golden. So we will not cut out uh, everything beside one. We I keep was, it like it is. I would say something. Sorry, like you say four, like you say one golden nugget. Uh, I you said three or four just now. But one thing you just mentioned, you mentioned A/B testing, and this people might not agree with me on them, but everybody talks about A-B testing and everybody does A-B testing and we are in the testing industry and this and that. But when you look closer, people are really lazier and lazier with the campaign and everything to really do this A-B testing. And I remember like back in the days, I really like, um, I did a bit of mathematics back in the days um, uh, and I can count until 10. And I realized that the A-B testing was really not, let's say, followed properly. And one thing I've suggest and i suggest it so many times and people sometimes look at me like i'm an idiot is the to really like always benchmark your a b testing with a a testing so every time i do an a b test i always do a1 a2 b1 b2 a1 and a2 being the same exact and b1 and b2 being the same exact just to know when you can actually make decision the worst thing with a b testing is to actually make the you think oh b seems to be doing better than a so we switch to B and actually you just made the decision too quickly. So make sure you benchmark your A-B testing. If the variance between A1 and A2 is greater than the variance between A1 and B2, that means you cannot make the decision yet. Mm -hmm. That's Another just a quick market. one. Yeah, but um, you're most probably right. I see it also that media buyers are starting and you see they have only one sub source and there is nothing else tested and they say like, uh, it's not working well, yeah, but for a lot of others it's working, most probably because it was not put enough effort into uh, yeah. different uh, split tests. I mean, sometimes we have like uh, 20 landing pages and they test one. Yeah. Which and one is your best landing page? I don't know. I don't know where you buy traffic. I don't know how you promote. What, I don't know what your creative looks like. I don't know how you do it. Uh, it's something which for the advertiser, and I was one for quite a long time, 
gets qu um okay which uh, what do you, what do you promote oh no just give me your best url it doesn't mean anything honestly it just doesn't mean anything it used to mean something i guess for you in the mobile day which was one great url uh open yeah, yeah, yeah. and it works but not in dating it does not work like that what, what i do in the meantime if somebody's really interested to also invest some money in media buying and try it i'm not speaking about seo or email there we have stuff that we can uh that we can pinpoint to this person but with media buying very often i give them something like a landing page rotator and after they made um, a serious amount of clicks and conversions, uh, we we eliminate the stuff. So this is how I um, how I how I get some guys really in good numbers. But to give a guy one landing page, this is the best one that we have. Yeah, yeah. and and, it's, and it's one of the reason. Of it. It's one of the reason I guess why API is not taking off as much as I would like to. Is because. We, we've been, and now I'm going to say a, a bad point and maybe affiliate is going to hate me, but we've been helping so much affiliate and doing so much work for them. When you start to do API, affiliate needs to get back to proper work and build his own, like spy properly, build his own landing page, build, build his own freelander because now he owns everything. So it's also a lot more work for the affiliate, that's for sure. And mm -hmm. you cannot expect to have API. And on top of that, ask. of course, you can ask your advertiser, hey, give me your top 10 landing page. I'm going to upload them to my server. And of course you can do that. And some advertiser will do it. But at the core of it, if you do API, you will have more work. That's for sure. Mm. But on the long term, most probably a, a better outcome if you if yes. you make it proper. Yes. OK, um, that's it actually for this second episode, API edition with uh, William. Do you have something more to uh, contribute to the audience? Something more to contribute? No, not really. No, if you guys, so as Stefan said, like I'm, I am um, really like into this um, area. So if you need any help or if you have any question, uh, I don't know how it works, Stefan, but Stefan can drop you my email or my Skype. If you have any question, anything you want to to ask uh, for this API stuff, for this like everything which fold around dating, please feel free to um, to Skype me. I will make sure I answer your question and we have a chat. And for the rest, no, I don't have really anything to add. It was great to be here. Um, I'm a bit, I'm a bit like sad we didn't add time to sing, but that's okay. We'll do it on the on the next episode. We, we make a one year anniversary version uh, exactly. where, where we only where we only sing. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, um, that's it for me, Stefan. Okay, then William, thank you very much for uh, being here at the show. Uh, not only for the time, but really sharing all this. I circle back this golden nugget. Uh, it was also for me working now since around one year with API and really loving it. Uh, some stuff that was also uh, new for me. For example, the point with uh, with the different URL where it should be posted. Never thought of it, but makes definitely uh, sense. So um, I'm sure that 99.9% .9 of the people that are watching it uh, uh, can take something out of that. So thank you very much, William, and thank you very much, Masters in Cash, for sponsoring this podcast of This Ain't a Dating Show, XXX. Have an awesome day, everybody. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye. Bye.